Hey guys, welcome back to the DeSilva Life channel. If you are new around here, my name is Christy. I'm the CEO and founder, and I am absolutely obsessed with automations and organizing my business. Okay, so before we actually dive into this video, I want you to sit here for a second and think about all of the tedious little tasks that you may be doing every day, every week that take up all of your time. Okay, maybe not all of your time and maybe you think, yeah, but they take five minutes here, five minutes there. Well, I'm telling you, they all add up. At first, it may seem pretty simple, right? Like creating a new client folder in Google Drive or creating multiple folders and resources for you to store your content. If I'm being honest, your time is way too valuable to be wasting it on tedious tasks like this that can actually be done by an automated system. Okay, so what is this video about? This is an introduction to Zapier and four of my favorite automation that we currently actually use at DeSelf Away. So what is Zapier? Zapier is an integrations tool that links one or more softwares together. So for example, when we book a new client project in our CRM HoneyBook, it then creates a client folder in Google Drive. This actually happens automatically every single time once you create this automation and set it to on. There are four apps I'm going to show you how to build today. I'm super excited because even if you don't need this exact one, it's going to spark some inspiration and at least get you familiar with the tool. All right, so let's dive in. Okay, so let's go through creating this zap. So if I click create zap, and then you would title it whatever you want. It's going to start from HoneyBook. So the first action is going to be that the project stage changed, or you could say project booked. Um, let's go with project booked for this one. If you did project change, ch stage change, you would then put a filter of what it changed to so that you make sure along these um, processes that it's doing the correct things at the correct stage. So, new project booked. I'm going to choose my account, continue, and then test the trigger. Okay, perfect. So, we have my test project in here, and now let's go through the action. So, now we're going to go into Google Drive and choose the event. We are going to create a folder. So, I'm going to click continue and then choose my Google Drive, continue, and then we're gonna set up the action. So it is my Google Drive, the parent folder is going to be clients, and then we're gonna set up the folder name. So this would be first name, space, last name. You could also say, okay, if this was, if I only booked HoneyBook projects, I could do HoneyBook dash first and last name. Any text you put is always gonna be standard. Any of these smart fields will always be dynamic. So you could just stop there. Do you just need a one folder? Or do you need multiple folders? So another thing you can do is you click continue, and then I'm gonna skip test for now. I would always recommend testing them, but I won't do that just a second. So then you can add another one. So we could do Google Drive, and let's say create a folder, continue, go through the same process, continue. Then the parent folder, you would click custom. And if you wanna nest this in that folder, it is not showing, let's see. Oh, because we did not test it. Okay, so let's test. Test action. Perfect. Okay, continue. Now let's set this up. Parent folder, custom, create Google Drive folder, perfect. 
And so then you're just gonna click that it's going to be put in this folder. You could also put the folder ID or the alternate link, whatever it is, you wanna click one of these knowing that, okay, it's gonna be put in this folder. And then what would this folder name be? Say you wanted to have them upload branding files. Any other folders that you would need in their client folder, you would then just type the names for. Click continue, let's test and continue. File not found, okay, let's go ahead and I'm actually gonna test to see if this is in my Google Drive. So let's try this. If we did create Google Drive folder and let's say we put the folder ID, continue. Perfect. Okay, so let's do folder ID and now you'll see clients, Christy De Silva. here's branding files. If you wanted to do more, then you would go ahead and you would just close this out, do the same type of thing. You could um, rename these steps as well. And then once you're ready to publish, you would go ahead and click publish. <music>
when it zaps in here. So we also have a dashboard that pulls in all of this data and you can see what that looks like in our ClickUp dashboards video. So I will make sure to link that in the description, but essentially just walking through these apps, if we go into the HoneyBook Finance Tracker, we have anytime a new payment is paid in HoneyBook, then it creates a task in ClickUp. So this is where it goes into our sales tracker template. It has the task name. So we set up that it'll have the project name and the payment amount in parentheses, the gross payment and net payment in the description. I used to do this because it, I would have to manually input it, but now you'll see if I go into edit mode that we have, it will now be the project name and then we have the net payment and the gross payment. We pulled those in from the fields from HoneyBook. So then as soon as a payment is made, it's actually going to bring it in here. The task name will always be the project name in parentheses, the gross payment. Then we have the status is going to be what payment processor it came in through. That's going to be automated through that Zap. And then we have the gross and net payments are now able to come in through Zapier and then the month. So here's an example of pulling in this data into widgets, how this information will be imported into a sales tracking dashboard. So you can see this month's gross and net sales, this year's net and gross sales by category, your monthly income. It will say the different um, sales breakdowns so you can see the different tasks and where that income is coming from. And so this is just really great to have these zaps running. So at your fingertips, anytime you want it, you'll have this dashboard pulling in that information. So you'll see in these other zaps, we actually have a formatter block in here and I'll show you what happens in that formatter block. Now each one is different because HoneyBook is great because it just has the gross and net payment, but in things like Stripe and PayPal, it only gives you that fee. So what we have to do in here is actually take that, or well, so PayPal will be the fee where the transaction net and Stripe for some reason comes out without the decimal. So we actually had to perform a math operation and multiply it by 0 0.01 in order to get that net fee and put it into the description, that custom field description in the next step three. So in the sales tracker template that we have in our shop, it has all of these zap templates and goes through each and every single formatting issue for these different platforms, so that's super helpful. So you're, if you're interested in getting the plug and play templates for both the sales tracker and for the zap templates, make sure to check that out in our shop. But again, this is one of my absolute favorite ways and favorite zaps is these sales trackers to be able to directly take something from my payment processor and bring that information to my sales tracker and then in the end have that beautiful sales tracking dashboard. Another one of my favorite zaps I use is to track new leads coming in from HoneyBook and bringing them into a leads pipeline within ClickUp. Now, HoneyBook is really great for tracking leads as well, and we have our leads in our pipeline, but our, our business and our team has grown to a point where we wanted to track our leads more granularly in ClickUp and be able to put other different subtasks. So you'll see when someone inquires, then it will assign a person and a due date to the next things that have to happen at each individual stage. So again, this pipeline is available in our membership and our shop um, if you are interested in checking it out, but I wanna go through exactly what happens in this zap. So the reason we have three are because we have different contact forms within HoneyBook. So one is our standard contact form that's embedded on our website. The other ones are for HoneyBook Pros and ClickUp Consulting. You'll see those here. Those are different contact forms. So we do have a filter within each of these that it only continues if 
the lead source is HoneyBook Pros or Clicko Consulting, etc. Okay, so what happens? We have this contact form that we've created. This one is just for our website and then it's embedded here, you can see that. Now, when someone fills this out, then it's going to create a task in ClickUp and I wanna show you the different fields. So if I go into edit, before Zapier had the ability to zap in these custom fields, we did put in the description all of the answers that they filled out. So email, Instagram handle, website URL, etc. But now we'll put, okay, it's going into the leads pipeline. What is the task name? It's gonna be the full name of the person inquiring. And then it's going to fill in these custom fields. So it'll fill in the website, the services interested, Instagram handle, email, and lead source. So then when it shows up in the leads pipeline, it's gonna look like this. So we have Kristen De Silva as the task name, and then this information is filled in within the leads pipeline. Also, when you click into this task, you'll see the information is here as well. And again, we use this so that automations trigger when it this lead gets filled out, it actually goes into inquired and then has subtasks for the next steps for that person to take action on that. We also have a lead tracking dashboard that pulls in information like lead source, services interested in, how many outstanding leads do we have or upcoming calls, consultation calls, how many proposals do we currently have pending and everything like that. So just like that leads tracking dash, that sales tracking dashboard, we have a nice visual representation of all of the outstanding leads within our business. So this is a zap that we really also love having our leads process really streamlined and organized and never having to do manual entry because Zapier is bringing all that information in for us. So hopefully the tutorial was helpful for you and now you can see that the power of Zapier Literally, the options are pretty much endless. If you want to fast track your own Zapier journey, you can go ahead and download our sales tracker if you're a ClickUp user. This is absolutely one of my favorite templates, also a fan favorite in our shop. And it actually includes four Zapier templates for different payment processors. So you can see it literally just plugs in your information and your tools, and then you log into your systems and it connects everything for you. It's pretty amazing. Plus it gives you the basis and understanding for future zaps as you start getting familiar with this tool. So let me know in the comments below how you use Zapier and how it helps you out in your business. I love being able to see how other business owners use different tools to streamline their own business and it's really fun to collaborate with other people because then we all just learn from each other. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want more systems organization and strategy videos when it comes to running and organizing and automating your business, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a beat. Thanks for watching.